I gotta be honest, I was very excited to play for Spoken. And knowing that so many games were coming out in 2023, I was eager to start off with this one. And actually, this is the first AAA of the year, the AAA game of the year. So, I played the demo, eager to see what that game had to offer. And then I was underwhelmed, I was disappointed. And I'm thinking I may not play the game at all, or maybe I just wait for sales. So, I'm Jiso, and today I'm going to tell you why exactly I think making a demo altogether was a bad idea but also why i want more games to make some demos i'm going to tell you why i think this game has some issues and i really hope they can address those when the game eventually releases drop a like subscribe and let's dive into it so first of all this isn't my first time playing a demo i'm used to and it used to be a thing Back in the day, right, every single game would have a demo, a way to tell you, I mean, in a way to initiate you to the game without the game being there. Maybe a way to build up the hype and make you understand the mechanics. So, I was going into Spoken with a lot of expectations. I didn't know what the game had to offer, but I knew I was excited to play it. And then I felt so overwhelmed. Right off the bat, I felt so overwhelmed. The one thing I thought I would like the most, which is spellcasting, ended up being the worst thing possible when it comes to my experience. And here's what I did after, when I realized that, hey, this isn't working out for me. I switched my controls to be able to attack using L1 and R1 as opposed to L2 and R2 for two reasons. The first one was finger fatigue. Why would you do that? I have to say, this isn't intuitive because you have trigger resistance and this is just so much time you can spend on one game pressing those two buttons without eventually running into finger fatigue. So I was playing for 30 minutes and then I realized like I was getting tired. So I just switched the controls and then it worked better. It didn't make me like spellcasting because I felt like it was just way too many information at once, but it did make the experience better. So if you were struggling too with the controls, I strongly advise swapping them. It's going to make a difference. Thank me later. So going back to spellcasting, I said I felt both overwhelmed and underwhelmed. I felt overwhelmed because I felt like I was giving too much information too fast and it is to be expected because it is a demo. So they have to give you a character which is high enough, I mean far enough into the game but not too far otherwise you risk spoiling yourself. So they have to give you so many spells at once and you have to understand that those games progression matters like how you get familiar with one spell after the other and then you're able to transition from one spell to the other. It's all part of the process. A process you lose when every single spell is given at you at once. Then you get confused, you get lost. And then even the spells, I mean, maybe, I'm saying maybe eventually when you progress in the story and have more spells, you can be more craftier because I'm all about flashiness. I'm all about doing things in a very special way. So I'm thinking maybe eventually it's going to be better. they are going to be more, um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be easier or better to just use spells. But I was very, very underwhelmed by the combat. I didn't want to fight. And most of the time when I was exploring the world I crafted, I wanted to avoid fight, fight, fighting people as much as possible because I didn't want to go through the process of using spells. Which is weird because I thought that was going to be the one thing I was going to like because I watched the trailers, I watched some gameplays and I, I listened to the characters talk and I was like, mm, I don't think that's going to work out because it, it was super, super, super cringe. And I can tell you it is even more cringe than we thought it was going to be. But I was, I was like, you know what? It's fine. If the gameplay is fine, I'm, 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 I'll be more than happy to just forget about the story. And as of right now, I don't think the story can save this game. I don't think so. I mean, not, I mean, not for at least I'm speaking for my experience. It's very important to keep that in mind. I'm speaking for my experience, and when it comes to my experience, I don't think the story can save. They can make the game better if I don't already like the gameplay. So then, what else, what else is there for me to, to do in this game? Exploration? That's the thing, I actually liked 
the prepare cool. I liked it. I like the fact that you can just run and jump. I mean, climb some mountains. Just just running. But I didn't like the world I was running into because it felt empty. It felt like a desert, like a deserted island with nothing to do. And I, I, I know, and, and again, I know you're going to say this is a demo. Wait for the full game. But I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't think it's going to be any different. I think everything we saw in the demo, minus some adjustments, some adjustments, some mechanics which are going to be included, I think the game is going to be to feel as empty as it is right now. And I, I just I don't I just don't understand why there is that that so much focus on making open world great games when I think having more linearity in games is the way to go i miss games like prince of persia like beyond good and evil where you can just craft a world which is linear right but feel that li that linear experience with so much stuff to do but and just just end the game the game is on a drag the game is going to be a drag to from like going from point a to point b and there's just nothing to do in between and i'm going to give them that the game runs very well and fast travel is amazing. It is so fast, like for the first time ever, after Ghost of Tsushima, of course, I'm like, hey, this is what fast travel is meant to look like. You just press the button and boom, you're there. I gotta give them that. And maybe that's the power of the PS4, I mean PS5, I don't know, but I don't know. The world just feels empty and I don't want to explore it. I just want to run and maybe make some races. I don't know. I just want to race against things and just explore. I mean, the, the game looks good. It looks amazing. It runs so well. It plays, the gameplay is fluid, but I just don't like it. It's just so weird. And coming from me, it is even weirder because I play so many games. Just last year, I played nearly a hundred games. And this is the first I like. Come on, I played Gotham Knights, and I had more fun playing Gotham Knights than I had playing for Spoken. And mind you, this game was had some major performance issues, and as of right now, it is still running at 30 FPS on the consoles. And you have Sports Spoken, which is supposed to be so much better performance-wise, which is not fun for me. Like, if I was to go on a deserted island right now, and I was to choose between only two games, Gotham Knights or Forspoken, 100% I was going to go with Gotham Knights, because at the very least, I had fun. I don't want the game to be going over the top with 4K, 30, I mean, 120 FPS. I, 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 this is not what I want. I want the game to be fun. And when it comes to that one aspect, Forspoken does not check that box. It just doesn't, and I wish it did, but I wasn't having fun. And I actually plan on making content on this game, but it's really hard to make content on a game if you don't like it. Because every single video you make is somewhat tainted because maybe you don't like it. And it, it, it can be, it, people can sense it that you don't like the game and I don't like it. And I don't want it to be the case for me. I want to be enjoying the game and make content about something I love. And I, again, I can't stress this enough. I'm sick and tired of everything going like open world with like nothing to do in it. I played, listen, I played Forspoken, I mean, no, no, I played Horizon Forbidden West. I liked the story, I think it was okay, but I loved the gameplay, which meant that I was actually eager to traverse the world and just suck it up because this game is amazing, it looks beautiful, and I don't know how it didn't win most beautiful game of the year, but yeah, I liked it. But if you always ask me, Forbidden West could have been 50% less big. And still accomplish the same thing for me. And when it comes exactly when it co also when it comes to Ghost of Tsushima, I like the story, but I love the gameplay. But more importantly, I loved the legend mode. I think I even invested more hours playing online than I did playing the actual game. Which goes to show that maybe going big, big, big and bigger is not the way to go. But you know what? It is a common thing now, and every single game is going bigger and bigger, and it meant it means that the world is going to get emptier and emptier. I wish it's not the case. I was told that there was going to be four areas you can you can visit when the game fully releases. I gotta be honest, I'm not looking forward because I, I, I'm pretty sure there's going to be nothing in those worlds, nothing worthy of discovering. And I might be wrong, I wish I was wrong, but it doesn't. it just doesn't look good. And lastly, there's something I want to say. 
playing the demo made me realize that maybe more games should do that. We're going to get so many games this year. <laughs> the Dead Space Remake, Resident Evil 4, Ishin, Ishin, uh, Like a Dragon Ishin, what again? Um, Hogwarts Legacy, like so many games. And imagine if you could, because those games end getting cheap. Like, come on, and those games are like, what, 70 bucks? Like, Jesus, this is just so much money. So imagine if you could narrow down that choice and by just playing a demo and you, you play the demo, you're like, mm, I don't like it. And then you skip it. Isn't that better? I, f I feel like I have to respect the devs. I think Square Enix is making this game, right? I have to give them a big thumbs up for being that ballsy because they knew the game would not be appealing to everybody and I'm going to I'm, I have I'm pretty sure that most people who played the demo I mean not most people but some people will not play the game just because they didn't like the demo so knowing that they took the risk to release a demo and I have to say I respect that and I want more studios to do that because I can assure you that if more people were to play demos then they will actually have a clear idea not have to wait for reviews of biased people who don't know anything about the game and just want the views right that way everybody will have a clear opinion and will play the game because they want to play the game and not because someone else has said someone else said that the game is good two different things so yeah I don't I didn't like the demo but I actually respect the choice of them making a demo altogether and again I'm still I still don't know if I'm going to play the game I want the game to succeed because I was hyped for it I thought it was going to be like Devil May Cry 5 it, was, it, it wasn't the case but maybe I think I don't get the full picture here so I'm willing I'm, I'm saying that <laughs> like just listen I'm willing to play this game because I want my expectations to be blown. Like right now, I'm not expecting much, but imagine that it was like some kind of reverse Uno and I ended up loving it because, well, it was that good. And the demo was just a bad representation of the game. <sighs> I guess we'll know next week. <laughs> I'm Jisoo, I want to know what you think about this game, what you think about the demo and whether or not you'll be getting it. Personally, I'm still arguing with myself. Maybe I will with that, maybe I won't. But as of right now, this game is in the bad spot, I think. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.